closed event survey directly after this webinar. Please help us out by filling it out. Um, and with that, I ask you to give your full attention to Jennifer Jolly and help me in welcoming her. Jennifer, it's all yours. Thank you, Melinda. I appreciate it. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I think this is such an important topic and it's something that has so much relevance um, in what is happening right now. So this is going to be good. Um, I have quite a bit of information to go over. Um, so of course, if you have questions, just like Melinda was saying, pop them in the chat box um, and we'll try to answer them as they come or at the end. So let me grab my PowerPoint here. There we go. Um, so like I was saying, I'm Jennifer Jolly. I'm a BCBA um, in, here in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and I'm working with Milestones Behavioral Services. Um, and during the COVID crisis, we've had quite a few questions about telehealth and how we can use it for, to help our families and also um, how our families can request it and also kind of what to expect when you use it. Um, so today we're gonna be going over some of the biggest points of it. I won't be going into a lot of detail, but there are always things that you can drop down and we'll talk about at the end, um, as well as having an opportunity to bring them to your BCBA and have questions that you can present with um, your ABA provider as well. So for our overview, we're just gonna kind of review what is telehealth, what does it entail, what are things that we have to do to ensure that the telehealth is going to be successful, but also ethical for both our parents and our students. We're also going to look at what services we can use for telehealth, um, and that'll tie into what telehealth, what we're required to do when it comes to telehealth, um, as well as preparing for an ABA telehealth session, what we do during a telehealth ABA session, and then what was going to happen after our telehealth session. Um, so let's just dive right in. So when it comes to telehealth, the American Telemedicine Association defines it as, med as medical information exchange from one site to another via electronic communications. And we want to use it to improve a patient's clinical health status. Um, so of course, we always want to look at the risk benefit that comes when we're using telehealth, um, whether it's better to do it in person or over a telehealth method. Um, and a lot of the factors that go into it are going to be things that we'll kind of see today and things that we're seeing today with the COVID crisis. The Agency for Health Health Research and Quality states that telehealth is used of telecommunications technologies to deliver health-related services and information that support patient care, administrative activities, and health education. So not only can we use telehealth to implement the ABA practices that are done in a clinical setting, typically, we can also use it to inform our parents and inform our students about what is happening and things that we can do in the home as far as um, staying safe when it comes to COVID. Uh, the CDC has listed any children or adults with delays or disabilities as an at-risk population. So because so many of our clients fall under an at-risk population, it's important that we advocate for their rights and needs. And a lot of that can be done through educating um, the people around us, but also our parents and how we can kind of advocate for their, their, their children's rights and needs. And finally, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid define it as a two-way real-time interactive communication between a patient and physician or practitioner at a distant site through telecommunications, equipment that includes at minimum audio and visual equipment. Now this is one that really, really matters to us in ABA because so many of our insurance companies are gonna go through some kind of Medicare, Medicaid services. Um, something that we have to keep in mind is I have a lot of parents who ask, is it possible just to call you? Can we just talk on the phone? Of course, it's, it's perfectly fine to call me. I'd love to talk to you on the phone. However, if it's going to be considered telehealth, if it's a way for me to serve you as your BCBA, 
then we need to have both audio and visual um, ability. I need to be able to see and you need to be able to see me as well as hear each other. Um, and this is really a big one. This is the CMS are the only people who require it to be both audio and visual, but it's also something like I said that we have to follow a lot for our guidelines. And I think that answers a lot of my parents' questions whenever they contact me and they say, hey, can we chat on the phone? I'm having some problems. Um, as a BCBA, I'm going to say, yeah, I would love to chat with you. Would it be possible to turn a video on so that I can kind of see what you're talking about and I can observe the behaviors that your child is having, um, as well as kind of how the home is set up, because it might be something as simple as changing how the home is set up, um, and that can be all seen through a video. So, Telehealth allows BCBAs and patients to maintain correspondence and treatment while minimizing contacts, contact and risk of exposure. Telehealth also enables us to maintain government recommendations and a stay at home order without a lapse in treatment. So telehealth has all of these amazing possibilities that allow us to use it across the board and across the distance. And of course, um, by minimizing our contact, but allowing for us to still communicate and also to allow for some treatment to take place in home. Telehealth often requires a shift in treatment goals and a more focused treatment plan. So you, if you have your child going to an ABA clinic for 30 or 40 hours a week, then they are typically going to be working on what we call comprehensive plans. So they're going to have several different programs that they're working on. They're going to be working on language and motor skills and toileting um, and things that can just be done across a long period of time. However, when we break down telehealth, we are much more limited on time. So your BCBA might come to you and say, what are the most important things that we can work on in home at this very moment? And that might be something as simple as getting your child on a potty schedule so that they're going to the potty every two hours and they come to expect that so they begin to have less accidents. It also might be something as simple as, let's work on your child asking for their wants and needs and not worry about anything else. Um, several of my children, unfortunately, were having potty training here at clinic when they were with me 35 hours a week. Um, and when we went home because of COVID, it just wasn't possible, it wasn't functional for the parents to continue such a strict potty schedule. So instead I said, hey, don't worry about the potty schedule. I want y'all to have a good time. I want y'all to be able to keep your sanity during this COVID crisis. And I think it's very, very important that we focus on something instead of pottying. So instead of pottying, put them back in pull-ups. We'll work on that when we get back to clinic. Let's work on them asking for things that they want and need. And we were, I had a lot of success when I was able to limit the focus of the things that we were going to work on through telehealth. It also requires that parents and guardians are actively trained in the implementation of treatment plans. I had a lot of parents who, when I began working with telehealth, um, expected to be able to put on the computer and put on a video and that the child would sit in front of the computer and work with me one-on-one -on -one through the video camera. Um, unfortunately, for most early learners, that's not a possibility. Now, if you have a learner who's a little bit more advanced, who enjoys being on the computer, um, that might be a great possibility. Your BCBA might be able to work one-on-one -on -one with them through the computer screen. However, for a lot of earlier learners, um, it really came down to the parents and guardians for me to train them via computer screen and then for me to observe them implement those treatment plans with their child in the home. Um, so it really depends on what your BCBA feels most comfortable with and also what's going to be most effective for your child in home. It might be that they sit there and work one on one with their BCBA for a computer. It might be that your BCBA takes 30 minutes, trains you on a procedure or, an, implement, or um, an implementation of a plan, and then watches you or observes you implement that with your child. So what are some services that can be used for telehealth? It's important to note that at this time, the HIPAA rules and regulations for video call services have been temporarily eased due to COVID-19 
and the immediate need for telehealth. So right now, HIPAA is much more relaxed in allowing us to implement telehealth and what services we can use to implement telehealth. Um, typically, HIPAA is much more strict about their regulations, but I think they saw what a need and what a crisis so many BCAs and families were in that they opened up a lot more lines of communication. Now, when COVID um, crisis settles down, the HIPAA rules and regulations will go back into place. So that is something to consider when you begin telehealth um, calls that you might not always be able to use the same calling system. So the first thing you want to think about is what works for you and your ABA provider. So right now, like I said, there are several approved calling services and they include but aren't limited to things that most of us have seen before, Skype, Zoom, Google Suite Hangouts, um, Amazon Chime, Let's see, Apple FaceTime, Facebook Messenger has been one that I've been able to use very successfully because it is something that a lot of people have in their back pocket and they're able to video call me via their phone um, and we're able to communicate that way. Um, I would say as a BCBA, my most successful video calls have definitely been through Zoom, Google Hangouts, and Facebook Messenger video during this time. Usually when you have telehealth calls in a non-crisis situation, you have time to set up environments that are a little bit more telehealth friendly, but you also have time to get a video service that is very HIPAA compliant. Um, and right now that's not always the case. So even though Google Hangouts and Facebook Messenger don't typically fall under HIPAA rules and regulations, um, they are something right now that we are able to use that most of our parents have at their disposal um, and we can start using it almost immediately. So it makes it very, very nice uh, and very user friendly to be able to reach out uh, and continue treatment and services for our clients through those uh, video call services. Let's see, so when we come to preparing for an ABA telehealth session, it's gonna be stressful. The first few times are always a little bit stressful, um, really because you don't know what to expect. Um, and it's also tough for a lot of our, our kiddos. A lot of them will have problem behavior when mom or dad or grandpa are on the phone or on the computer. So a lot of our par my parents call me and they say, or they text me or they email me and say, hey, I'm having a hard time getting on the computer right now because my child is engaging in problem behavior. They're crying, um, they don't want me to be on the computer, they want to use the computer. Um, and so I always just really encourage them that, you know, this is important, this is something we can do. Um, the good news is that as soon as you get me on that video camera, I'm there to support you through this. I want to be able to see that problem behavior so that I can help up you implement a plan that's going to decrease it over time and something that also is going to be effective and make your life easier and your kids life easier down the road. Um, so don't be afraid if the first few times are very stressful and if the first few times that your your kid doesn't really take to it that well they kind of struggle with you being on the camera. Some other things that you kind of want to keep in mind is you want to be able to find a quiet place with some good lighting. Um, that way you can see, but also that your BCBA can observe through the camera and they can kind of see what the environment looks like. So much of what we do um, is based upon being able to control for the environment. Um, so it's important that we're able to see it. A lot of times if the room is too dark, your BCBA will ask you if it's possible to turn on a light or open a window. That way they can see the environment a little bit better and help you um, prepare for some of the behaviors that you might see as the telehealth session continues. Of course, you need to have some good internet. Um, it's going to be hard to talk to your BCBA if y'all keep falling in and out. Uh, so it's important to think about do I need to hardwire my computer uh, with an Ethernet cord or is my Wi-Fi strong enough? If you have a phone, is it better to be on Wi-Fi or data? Um, and kind of troubleshoot that as you go. Make sure that your volume and microphone are working. 
Keep your camera at eye level. Now, sometimes this is a little bit difficult, especially if you have a child who's crying on the floor or um, pulling your camera out, pulling your phone out of your hand. But being able to keep it to where we are able to see, even if it's um, pointed downward, it allows us, like I said, just to see a little bit more clearly what is happening in the environment and ways that we can help and implement some treatment plans for those behaviors. Earbuds might be a great idea for you as the parent. Um, a lot of times with early learners or learners who um, aren't going to be working one on one with the BCBA through the computer, they don't necessarily need to hear us during the ABA or the telehealth session. Um, so having earbuds for you might be able to put us loud enough into your ears to hear us any over any problem behavior your child is having or over any language your child is speaking at the time. Um, so it might be good if I parents to put one in this ear and leave this one out um, just so that they can hear me, but they can also keep aware what's happening in the environment. Of course, prepare any questions, any data you have that you want to talk with your BCBA. Um, it's always good to have things written down so that when you get on camera, they don't just whoosh out of your head. I know a lot of times, you know, I'll sit there with a the parent and they'll say, oh, I think I was supposed to tell you something else. Um, and they'll remember at the end. But it's always good to just kind of have things written down because once you get on that video call, it's very easy to kind of fall off topic or to move to a different topic that's just as important. Um, so just having things written down will keep it a little bit more paced at a level that you can follow and keep the important things up front. Also have your supplies ready to use, depending on the goals that you want to target during session. Um, some of our telehealth sessions that we wanted to continue working on potty training, the whole telehealth session was in the bathroom. Um, so I had the parent bring a few toys and books into the bathroom with them, um, and we spent an hour with our kid in the bathroom working on potty training. Um, now it was great, that parent was ready for it because it had, was something that we had communicated about previously and they just had a bin of toys they were able to pick up and bring with us. Um, but it's important to just keep in mind what are some things your child really likes, what are some things that typically cause problem behavior that you kind of need to be able to control for and just have everything in one place so that your session runs very smoothly. All right, so now that we've prepared for a telehealth session, what are some things that we need to do during our session? What is it going to look like during a telehealth session? Well, if it's your first telehealth session, your BCBA is probably going to ask you, how are things going at home? What are things looking like? How are you feeling? Um, and how is your child functioning? They're also going to kind of take some time to probably teach over a few topics. So it might be something as simple as, hey, let's look at or just review what does reinforcement mean? You know, when would you provide reinforcement? Um, reinforcement is what you're gonna give your child when they're doing really, really good things. Okay, what is a really good thing that your child's been doing lately? Um, you know, they, they've been sitting at the table, then that's something that, let's practice providing reinforcement for that behavior. Um, it also might be something much more in depth. So just be aware that your BCBA probably will take some time to work a little bit on um, your understanding of ABA because it's going to be so imperative that you have a strong understanding for why you're going to be doing all these things that you're gonna be doing down the road and during the telehealth session. Um, your BCBA may then model programs for you on the videos and they might show you exactly what it would look like um, and then kind of have you practice it back with them and then they're going to observe you while you implement that with your child um, and just kind of give you some feedback as it goes back and forth. So that would typically be kind of what a telehealth session would look like for me. Um, let's look at some kind of pointers to keep in mind as you go through a session. You wanna be able to review data and goals from previous sessions. So if you've had three other telehealth sessions working on reinforcement, then you want to be able to review that, but also to say, these are things that I feel really strong on, and these are things that I struggled with this week or in the past few days. 
You also want to make sure that you have time for your VCBA to observe your child with you. Um, and a lot, I found in my time as a VCBA and doing telehealth during COVID, that it's been so important that me and the parents set expectations for how long a telehealth appointment will last. Um, because sometimes uh, my parent only has 30 minutes, and so we cut down all the fat, and we just focus on the most important thing for those 30 minutes. Versus if I have a whole bunch of time, I uh, have an hour, an hour and a half, then that's going to be a lot more practice, a lot more conversation, a lot more getting into all of the procedures and things that we will be doing during our session. Um, so I think it's a good thing just to keep in mind that um, you should definitely talk to your BCBA. How long do you think this is going to take? Um, that way I can plan to have an hour free or only have 30 minutes free. Um, that way you're prepared to kind of follow through with that timeline. Of course, don't be afraid to take notes or ask questions. Um, this is going to be so important um, that you are able to ask the questions and kind of write things down. After a telehealth session with my parents, um, I always try to email them a list or kind of a lock of what we talked about during that telehealth session and some tips and tricks that we pointed out during the telehealth session just so that they have something in writing something that's going to they're going to be able to take away from the video call also don't be afraid to request your bcba to model techniques for you um, this is going to be really important because if you don't see it then you don't necessarily um, have the best understanding of how it's going to be when you actually perform it with your child um, it's a lot different to talk about things than it is to actually do them. So having your BCBA model for you is going to be best practice and it's going to give you the clearest idea of how things could go correct and how things could go incorrect. Stay open to hearing feedback so that you can um, get the best help and support during a session. Um, you're probably doing this and it's very tough and it's scary um, and video calls are not always easy to kind of follow through on. Um, just remember that your BCBA there always is always there to support you um, and they want you to have a good time but also to be effective in the treatment that you're performing with your child. Um, so they're going to probably give you some feedback and kind of help you to work out the kinks as we go through it. Um, so just remember to stay open that, to that and remember that during a telehealth session, you are your child's clinical team. You know, your BCBA is there on video, they're on camera, they're there to support you, um, but you are doing everything hands-on. Um, and some things might not be working for you. There might be points and procedures and implementations um, that aren't good for you or your child. Um, and it's not something that you're going to be able to do in the long run. And it's important that you tell your BCBA that because there's always another way to do it, especially if it's going to be something that's um, going to be more functional for you and your child as y'all grow. And then of course it's important to talk about at the very end, um, when is your next telehealth appointment? You know, do you feel pretty good about this one? Do you think that you should schedule another for a couple of days? Do you think you need a week before you can schedule another one? So just keep in mind, um, timing. Um, I really push pretty strongly that my parents and I have a telehealth session at least once a week and I think that my preference is probably twice a week um, with at least 30 minutes to an hour for each telehealth session. That way we can catch things as they happen and catch behaviors as they happen and we're not constantly playing catch up with each other or with the child. All right, so we survived. We've gone all the way through how to prepare for a telehealth session, what happens during a telehealth session. So now that we've done it, what do we do afterwards? It's not as simple as turning off your video call, unfortunately. There are things that you have to do as you finish. Um, so you want to talk to your other family members about what a session looked like and the skills that you're working on. It's very important that the, we have consistency across the treatment of a child. And so it's important that you are open with them and say, 
you know, um, the, my child and I, we worked on them requesting their wants and needs or asking for things that they really wanted when it was snack time. Would you be open to having them ask during dinner time for you to pass the potatoes or whatever it is? And just share with them the skills that you're working on so that across the household, they can begin to practice those skills with different people, even if it's in a very relaxed kind of manner. If you need to collect data during the time that y'all are not in a video call or after a video call has happened, um, set reminders for yourself on your phone. Or um, a lot of times I'll have parents that have a note app on their phone. And so whenever they see something happen or they need to take data, they just take it straight on that note app and then they're able to email it to you later. Uh, makes it so much easier and it doesn't require that you carry around a pen and pencil everywhere you go. Send your data to your BCBA after a telehealth session if you took any data. That way your BCBA can graph it all for you and can show you what the behavior is looking like as time progresses. A huge important thing in ABA is that we look at the behavior across time and it's important that we have that data on a graph. Kind of like I was saying earlier, encourage others in home to conduct their own ABA sessions, as well as just practice skills that you know your child can do. Um, if your child has a big sister who likes to color and your child is working on coloring, encourage a big sister to color with your child. Um, or encourage a big sister to sit at the table and eat her snack so that brother can also sit up, practice sitting at the table and eating your snack. So like I said, it doesn't have to be the ABA that you're providing during a video call with your child, it could be something much more relaxed, just a simple manner to continue practicing those skills as they go through their day-to-day -day activities. And review any notes taken during the session and write down any questions for next time. Again, another thing that I like to do is email my parents kind of an overview of what happened during the telehealth session so that they have a hard copy of things we practiced. Um, and a lot of times they'll add notes to those as we go. All right, guys, so that was um, everything I had when it comes to going through a telehealth session, also kind of what is telehealth and what it will look like and services that you can use for it. Um, so I just kind of want to open the floor now and see if anyone had any questions. Hey, that was great, Jennifer. Thank you. One of the questions in the chat box is, you know, we all have varying levels of knowledge about this subject. What does BCBA stand for? Yeah, that's going to be your um, board certified therapist. And I'm sorry, I'm from Texas, but it's also in Louisiana known as LBA, uh, a licensed behavior. Okay. Thank you. Um, another question is, how long is a typical appointment, meeting, session, however you describe it when you do it by webinar? I my parents to block out an hour for a telehealth session. Um, a lot of times, not 30 minutes, I will also do a 30-minute session. Um, but typically, I keep it an hour. I feel like for most of my parents, that has been enough time to really practice a skill, but it's not so long that um, their whole family's kind of getting aggravated on the phone. Um, I think if you go much longer than an hour, it gets to be very, very tedious. So I think between 30 minutes and an hour is what has worked really well for me and my parents. And, um, Wallace is reminding me to tell everybody that you can access the chat box from the bottom of your screen and type in any questions if you have any more questions. I have one more though. Um, so your child doesn't want to do a session or to do this. You should start doing it anyway. Is that what you're recommending? And then see if they fall in line or am I confused? No, I do strongly recommend. I have had, you know, parents who have called and asked to cancel a telehealth session because their child is on the floor 
time. Um, and that is so important for us to be able to see as your support um, and as someone who is working with your child, seeing those behaviors is just as important as sitting down and working at a table. So I always try to encourage my parents, you know, hey, I understand that that's tough right now. Would it be possible still to turn the video on real quick? Um, and you and I can chat while I look at these behaviors and I jot down some notes um, so that in the future we can, we can create a treatment plan that's gonna be helpful for these behaviors um, in the long run. And, you know, the last thing I would want parents to do is say, you know, hey, it's too difficult with my child to be on the phone um, and their BCBA to give up on them for telehealth. Because even though it's tough to do it and your child, it's not your child's favorite thing, it's still so important that um, we be able to see those behaviors and help you come, come up with something that will be beneficial in the long run for you. Let me check the chat box and make see sure there's no more questions. How will a family know what app they're going to use for an ABA telehealth session? Um, that's typically you're going to talk to your um, your list or your um, child's behavior analyst about. It's really what works best for you right now because HIPAA has so many doors for us. Um, like I said, if you have Facebook Messenger, literally all you have to do is send a message to your behavior analyst and then y'all can video call from there. So it doesn't require that you download any special app. It doesn't require anything other than opening up that message. Um, and I think that has been so useful in my time. Now, unfortunately, it's not something that's going to stick around when HIPAA becomes more strict about video calls again. Um, but I think it's a good step in the right direction. Um, another one that I found very useful is Google Hangouts. So if you have a Gmail account, all you have to do is um, send that person a Gmail and you're then able to video call free through that system as well. Um, so I think a lot of it depends on what is what's going to be the easiest for you and the most functional for you and what does your BCBA also have um, in their, what can they use in their house or with their phone as well. So I suppose a, um, your BCBA would be able to lead you through how to do those things because in all honesty I have never done a call through messenger mm -hmm. and I wouldn't know how to hang out if you needed me to um so you could help me with that right oh yes a hundred percent and it might be um, i have parents who do prefer to use zoom or skype because it's something i'm more familiar with um and those are great options too so if it if it's best to kind of do one of those then there are so many available right now that there's definitely something that y'all could learn together um or y'all could teach each other Okay, um, let's see. What type of strategies can parents do to prepare their child for a telehealth session? I think the most important thing is probably um, approaching it pretty calmly. Um, it is going to be your first few telehealth sessions are, are a little bit stressful just because you don't know what to expect. So I think as long as you maintain a sense of call as well as having some things that your child can engage with while you talk to your uh, BCBA on their video call. Um, so if that means that your child needs to sit for a little bit and play a game on it while you chat with the BCBA, that might be the best option. Um, another thing might be, you know, to do the video call in their room so that they can sit and play with their toys while you begin the video call. Um, again, you should hopefully start pretty slow with you. Um, work on things that are going to be very successful and positive in the beginning. Um, you want to work on things that your child is going to enjoy, that you're, you're, as a parent, you're going to enjoy working on. Um, so hopefully, if your BCBA says, let's work on something really, really difficult, don't be afraid to say, hey, 
that's a, that's a lot right now, you know, everybody's home, this is difficult, can we work on something that maybe is a little bit easier? Um, and that should be a great option. But yeah, just make sure that your child has things to play with. Uh, they have something to keep them kind of preoccupied while you set the stage with your BCBA and you all begin talking through the behaviors that you've seen and what your goals should be um, so that they have something to do while all of that's happening. Well, it looks like we've answered all of the questions in the chat box. I want to thank you again for agreeing to do this with us um, and remind everybody about the evaluation. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye. Bye.